today I'm going to be sharing with you a person illustration and I thought it would be interesting to kind of do it in real time with you and um, then also walk you through the products I'm using, products, supplies, <laughs> the things I'm using to create this. Um, and when I'm using them, I've just never really done a video like that. Um, so I thought you guys might enjoy it and might be able to learn something from it. As you know, I've been trying to work on people illustrations and I've been getting a little interrupted here and there with, um, just like regular work commissions and stuff like that but I like really want to devote some time to this because I feel like um, you know I had the the agency tell me that they'd like to see more people illustrations from me in either the spring or the summer and I don't want that time to come and me be like oh crap I didn't do anything so yeah, it's really important to me to focus on it and I'm just doing the best that I can to work it in here and there. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so I wanted to share some of the supplies with you that I used for this illustration. I've been working with a variety of mediums for this particular illustration. Um, as with most of mine, I'm using colored pencils, pen, and watercolor and Copic markers. I'm using a few shades of brown, blue, and one called cadmium red that actually turns out more like a pink, um, as well as a few accent colors for the clothing of my person. So I will tell you exactly what color I'm using when it comes up in the illustration. So one of the hardest things for me with preparing for doing more people has been just figuring out how to get them to feel cohesive with my animal characters. Um, I've been doing a lot of like digital stuff and I feel like I like it, but as far as like the main part of the painting, like I'd rather finish it digitally with some little accents and do it mostly traditionally. And since most of my animals in my portfolio are done in watercolor with some colored pencil and pen, I really wanted to be able to do people in the same medium and feel happy with it. So um, for this girl, I am using right now the Tuscan Red, and it's a Prisma Color Erase, or Col Col Erase, it's kind of spelled weird. Um, but it's kind of like an aubergine, plummy brown color, and I just like it because it blends in with the skin um, nicely, but still creating a defined edge. Um, I will later be going back in with a thin line of pen but this just softens that edge because I find if it's just like a peachy color up to the very edge and then I do um, the pen I just don't quite like it as much so I'm also using it for her lips and her eyelids um, slash eyelashes and some of the shadows that you see going in with the cadmium red which, like I said, ends up being kind of pink. Depending on how hard you press, you know, it gets darker. Also, I'm kind of working on making the nose the same way. I don't like to put a lot of pen on the face, as you will see. Um, if you look at the two illustrations I did leading up to this, I actually started her um, the other day and I did one illustration where I did pen in her eyes like as pupils and one where I didn't and I liked the one where I didn't more so I wanted to try this pose today without that pen. I'm putting down the colored pencil first um, because the colored pencil tends to react differently with the paper um, before the watercolor versus after. So if I do it before, it kind of blends really nicely on the texture of the paper. But if I do it after the watercolor, it 
doesn't really want to do that same kind of soft blending. And guys, I just started using this uh, little swatch paper to test out my colors and it's been so nice. I can't tell you how many times I make a, like I mix a color, especially for skin tone, and I put it on the actual painting and I'm so disappointed with it. So I'm really happy that I started using the swatch paper. And as you see, I've got this little palette that's just like filled with all different colors, but um, primarily what's getting mixed there is Winsor & Newton um, ochre, which is like a mustard yellow, and some of Dr. PH Martin red, I think it's cherry red, and those are being mixed together and watered down. I really do want to work on um, drawing more races though. That's an important thing to have in your portfolio. But since I'm just getting started, kind of feeling comfortable drawing people, um, this is a character that I came up with. Yes, she does have similar coloration to me, <laughs> which I think is probably gonna be a helpful thing for me thinking about the way her skin works, the way her hair works. I sketched this illustration on Procreate and as you can see I have pretty thick lines and I like to leave a thick line from my Procreate sketch um, because it gives me a little bit of leeway with where the final edge ends up um, when I actually go in with my pen on the final drawing. It's just you know either I could go on the inside of the line the outside of the line and I don't mind if it shows up on the edges because I do like a little bit of a a sketchy loose look with um, what I what I do. This is a wet on wet technique that you see here where I'm going in and um, her skin tone color is still fairly wet and I've added a little bit of red to my paintbrush and kind of just dabbed it on there and you can see that it bleeds and it creates a really nice little cheek blushy moment. I'm going in with a brown Prisma color pencil. It's called Sienna Brown. Um, I really like it just because it's not super chocolatey and it also doesn't have like an ashy look to it. It's very warm. I am also going in with Goldenrod, which is also a Prisma color pencil. Um, these have a little bit more of like a waxy richness to them, I think, than the erasable colored pencils. So you just get a little bit more pigment down, I think. Went ahead and went into her hair and did that. Um, one thing that's just kind of something I've been thinking about is part of the thing that I struggle with for doing people is that their skin is usually so smooth versus like an animal, it's their face is covered in fur. So the whole look is different. The way I paint is different because I don't really do much wet on wet with my animal characters. Um, but I did think about her hair and how I wanted it to have a little bit more texture like the fur of my animals might. And hopefully that'll be a way that she will end up looking cohesive with those animal characters if I ever wanted to have her with animals, um, which I do actually imagine her as being like, she lives on an island out to sea and like by herself basically. And she takes care of puffins. So that is her persona. That's. That's the little character idea for her. And yes, she is an adult, a young adult. Um, and I really need to work on children. But like I said, I really just wanted to do something that I felt like I might feel fairly comfortable doing. Um, and yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I was having a hard time feeling satisfied with anything I've been making for, I don't know, past week, week and a half or so. Um, and it was just getting really frustrating and sucking my motivation. So I was really happy when I um, did the, the right side pose of her the other day and felt really happy with it. So um, I'm excited to be working on this this other pose, it's kind of a different expression. The other one, she's very like straight faced, almost looks a little bit sad, but um, this one is just a little bit more like she's looking at something really cute <laughs> or sweet, or she's having some kind of sentimental happy thought, I think. So we'll see uh, how she turns out. 
On this second attempt here, her hair turns out a little bit darker than it did in the first one. I'm not sure which version I prefer for the hair, um, but I do think that, as you'll see later, the way that I do her eyes, I think she ends up looking more like the same girl as, as the second pose over on the right which is definitely an important thing. You want your characters to look like they're the same person throughout the book. I don't remember what it was, but I feel like I was watching something recently and I felt like if the person didn't have the same clothes on the whole time, I wouldn't have realized it was the same person or the same character. I can't remember what that was. Indigo Blue, that is what I'm using for her eyes, for her pupils. And I'll also use it doing some of like the edges of her sweater. Uh, going back in with the Tuscan Red to do her eyelashes over again and also just add a little bit more definition to her eyelid and her eye shape. Some nice little chunky eyebrows. And then one thing I found that I really liked doing is to go back in with that brown just on the under edge of the eyebrow and it really kind of adds a little bit of dimension with just like a single stroke line. I really like when I can add, yeah I'm using my little like nub because it just keeps cracking off with pencil. But I really like when you can add dimension to something by doing a really simple stroke rather than having to do a crazy amount of blending. I think that it um, just gives the piece a little bit more character even though it's obviously a really tiny part of the drawing. This is such a thin pen and I really like it for going in on faces and adding details because for me one of the worst things is just going in with a thick black pen and all of a sudden it's just way too harsh on kind of a delicate face, you know, and sometimes if the line is too thick you don't get your expression quite um, the way that you wanted it to begin with. Also going in and adding little individual hairs to her eyebrows, not too many, just a few little dashes. And I decided to go more with the uh, the second, well not the second, but the, the right side illustration that I had finished. But I needed to go back in with some pencil over her hair and add a little bit of fuzziness around the edges and just a few more distinct dark lines. If you have the problem where you keep sharpening your pencil and it keeps breaking off in a little nib like that, I think I discovered why that happens today. And I think it's because you're pressing too hard into the sharpener. But if you just more like lightly put the pencil in there and twist it, it doesn't tend to break as much. So that's a little tip. I don't know, it worked for me, but I still decided to use that little nub because I only, I only fixed my goldenrod pencil. I didn't fix the brown one. And this is Pale Thistle colored Copic marker. The number is B as in boy, V as in Victor, 0000. And I really like going in with it to add light shadows. I like the lavender just because it's really soft. Um, something I learned from Fran Nerd. She has an amazing YouTube channel. Um, she's just always so inspiring, and I I really like that trick about the lavender shadows. I, I do my shadows differently than she does, but um, lavender is a great color for it, so I'm, I'm happy to have learned that from her. It just adds a softness, I think, and it kind of bridges the gap between warm tones and cool tones. And when it's that light color and you're just kind of layering it over your watercolor, it behaves like watercolor. If I had chosen a darker, um, darker Cropic marker, it might have been a little bit more harsh. You can see I'm just really lightly going in and adding some definition around her face with the pen. Adding in some little hairs. And I think it's just really starting to come together.
There's little ear details. This is just like, it's the tiniest little point on the pen and I love it. Um, I love it for things like this, but sometimes I want the line to be a little bit more prominent or chunky looking. And um, that is when I pull out my other pen that I showed you at the beginning of the video, which is a Uniball. But you'll see it when I get to her sweater. I'm going in with that Tuscan Red around her hands. And you see she's kind of holding her hands with her fingers intertwined and adding a little bit of shadow there. It might be a little extra pink, but sometimes people's hands are more pink than like their faces are. So hopefully it works. Now I'm using my favorite color watercolor, which is Payne's Gray. And again, it's a Winsor & Newton and it's a solid watercolor um, rather than like a liquid ink, which I do use sometimes. And that is gonna be the color of her sweater. And I really wanna just celebrate watercolor um, in this piece. I don't wanna try to make the tone too even or anything. I just want it to kind of do its thing. Um, partway through though, I remembered that in the original version I did, I had gone in with the indigo pencil and kind of um, colored in more distinct outside lines. Um, so I decided to do that before I do the watercolor because like I said, the pencil behaves differently once it's under the watercolor. If you do forget something like this though, just remember that your watercolor can dry kind of fast and sometimes it's hard to blend after the fact. So I had to work pretty quickly to get that where I wanted it to be so I didn't end up with a weird splotch that wouldn't go away. Her outfit is loosely based on my clothes. <laughs> I have a sailor sweater that's like, well I call it my sailor sweater, it's like my favorite thing ever. Um, I have this giant gray sweater I got at TJ Maxx um, and it was a Gap sweater but obviously I got it on like a big sale and I just love it. And when we lived in Oregon and we went to um, do our pelagic where we got to see, um, so a pelagic is when you go out on a boat into the ocean not into the ocean, but out on the sea. And got to see so many different seabirds and fish and dolphins and humpback whales. It was just amazing. So it's my sailor sweater and I wear it quite a lot. And so I'm doing Payne's Gray and it's mixed a little bit with um, Prussian Blue, but not too much because I want her jeans to be blue, so I have to make sure that I have a differentiation between this color because I'm not really looking for like a jumpsuit kind of effect. Doing this outline on her jeans in my black Prismacolor Erase, it's a little different than like a typical graphite pencil um, and it's not like as harsh as a pen but I just felt like it suited the jeans more rather than having her whole outfit outlined in the indigo. I just thought it would add kind of a little something different. So just going in, adding pocket details, seams, things like that. And adding those details, like, you know, the wrinkling seam at her knee, I think just adds to the overall effect. Um, you know, because you could obviously you could just do the outline and then fill it in with blue, but I um, want your characters to feel like they could be real. Not that they're so realistic, but just that they could be real. And I think that things like that add to the effect. Doing some little hiking boots. The other pose has rain boots, so I don't know why I did that exactly, but I'm just going with it. For her jeans, it's a really watered down version of Prussian blue. And I really like how it goes with the sweater. I think it's um, complimentary, but not too similar. Sometimes I feel like I drag my 
paintbrush back and forth too much. Like it's probably not necessary. Like I do the sketching motion with my paintbrush. It's kind of, it annoys me as I watch it because <laughs> I don't really know that I'm getting more ground covered by doing that. I'm probably just messing up my brush, but oh well. There's things that you learn watching yourself that you don't always realize while you're doing the painting. And the reason that I didn't film the original uh, first part of this painting um, or the first like version is just because when I'm trying something new, I don't always like to film it because I think it can affect the way that I work. Um, and I just wanted to paint for myself kind of and not feel scared to try something or feel like, oh no, the camera's rolling, I can't take a break. So anyway, yeah, I just kind of wanted to figure my stuff out and then come back and show you guys I'm redoing this one pose and see how it turns out. For the jeans, I'm not doing the shadows in the uh, the Copic marker, the lavender one. Um, I'm just doing it in a little bit more of a saturated wash of the Prussian blue. Then, while it's still kind of wet, if you do go in while it's wet, your um, your colored pencils will kind of bleed a little bit, um, which creates a soft effect, but it also kind of makes them darker. So you just have to decide when you want to do that. Sometimes it ends up being too much, um, but sometimes it works really well. So there's one thing that I do kind of, it's like a blessing and a curse. I really like with traditional media that you can't, um, always undo something, you know, and you have to live with it and work around it. Um, as you can see, I just tried to dab that away and it was like, couldn't happen. So now it's just part of the painting. But if I was on Procreate, I would probably have just erased that and tried again. So sometimes there's happy accidents that add more character, air, bar, bar, bar. <laughs> add more character to your piece. Um, than you might have initially thought to put in. And now for her boots, I am going in with Copic marker that is the color called Sand. And I really like this brown. Um, it's kind of similar to the sepia Copic marker, but just a little bit more like neutral. And the number slash code for that is E. It does add like a really solid coverage that um, watercolor doesn't always do. You know, it's more like it's less modeled. So I do end up going back in with some colored pencil just to add a little bit of shading. And for her shoelaces, I'm using Spanish Olive Copic Marker. For the little chocolate brown parts on the boots, I'm using a uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, and it's a brown one, Dark Sepia 175. And this is Payne's Gray going in on the rock, but I think it started out with a little bit of blue so I just made sure that it was more blackish, grayish by adding some brown. Now I'm going up to her sweater. I have my Uniball waterproof pen, which is very glidey compared to the felt tip Micron ones because a uniball is a ballpoint pen and it's the micro size uniball vision and I think you can get these at art stores but I have a big pack that I got at Staples and I think that it suits the weight of the sweater 
Just adding a little texture here and there to kind of give it a nubbly, cozy feel. Here they are side by side. On the left is the one I did yesterday with the pupils done in pen. And here is the one on the right, the one I just did, where I just used the indigo on the eyes. That's really the only big change. Oh, also, I did not do any pen on her mouth. So let me know what you guys think. you guys enjoyed that if you did I would love if you would like and subscribe I read all of your comments I love it when you guys have something to say and yes and also thank you to my patrons because this is really a specific project that I don't think I'd be doing without them because their support allows me to set aside time for working on things for my children's book illustration portfolio and taking time away from my shop. So thank you patrons. And if you want to become a patron, there's a link below. Thanks so much.